when I meditate on your excellencies You bled in my stead, my federal head, you represent me Your death was the fee, so your elect could be free Called us effectually, it was predestined to be Redeems us, exciting me, enticing me to flee lust. Refrain from sin, its ways are grim. There's no greater thing to delight in Jesus. Why I'm pleased to sing, cause you're my Lord and Savior, my high priest and king, and the world's creator, my shepherd, my master, whom I adore and applaud. The image of the uh, you know, you have the Bible that was written by who knows who, where the gentleman said, who knows who wrote the Bible? Who are you? Well, you know who wrote the Bible, and specifically, you could pull up a list, maybe, um, where you know it lays out which book was written by whom. It was written by who knows who and obviously it's open to a matter of interpretation so just do the proper interpretation who, well, whose interpretation is right how can you say that one person's interpretation or one belief system is right compared to another one well you're saying who's to say that one religion is right you can respond who is to say one religion isn't right because that shows that he's making a firm standpoint um against your religion, which is a different position, another religious uh, right. philosophic notion. How can you say that one person's interpretation or one belief system is right compared to another one? Well, let's take a look. Like this. If we just take, uh, let's start at the beginning. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, what prayers, is, intercessions, is, and giving of thanks be made for all men. From? What, no, no, I'm now, gonna I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you how we do this, no, no, sir. Where does, where does this come from? Who exhorts? Uh, I'm Who gonna wrote this you. down? Who exhorts okay. stuff? One thing I'm sorry, no, but yeah. I can write down stuff. I can tell you it's true, okay. but it doesn't mean it's true. Word. Let me answer his question, no, then we'll it, get it, to you. It's, no, it's about... Okay, I'm gonna cut you off so I can answer his question. Who exhorts Okay, if we read this, how would you read that? What? How would you interpret that? That I first line. I, I want to tell it any way I want He's to, but Dutch. it depends okay. on how He's you Dutch. write the things down. Okay, right? but here's the thing. Write down Could you thing. get out of this? No, no. Don't I went to the that. liquor store and bought that. tomatoes no, from Hamid. And you are wrote. so full of shit. It's finish. unbelievable. Okay. You? You're sitting over okay. here. Don't be Duchess. All your stories. Don't be Clowns. Blah, blah, dealing with clowns. Blah, 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 That's blah, how the world sounds to you, huh? Because you don't know how to discern blah, blah, a noun from a verb, from an adjective, from a person. You're being anti you, you don't know He's how Dutch. to speak English. Blah. You're like the peanuts game. You're being anti-Dutch. You know, you know, right wah. now, let me tell That's, you a story. Let me tell you in something. In Europe, right now, in Western Europe, all the churches are going empty because all the people that... Well, get over there so you can fill them up. Go on. Like 80 get on the plane. And you're so... Look what's happening. Go on, make haste. Yes, sir, let me talk to them. You're Crash Duchess. The he's he's Thank Dutch. You. And you're Happy hour's Dutch. over. Can you answer the question? He said, was, yes, I, I, yeah. he said it's <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> that you believe this. I wonder if he takes that same unbelievable approach in his mind to the historical events of George Washington. Yeah, let me answer this question really quick. Okay, the thing is this. In literature, there are rules. You go to college, your professor's not going to let you get away with interpreting his homework any way you want. Well, I thought you wanted me to answer with A when... I'm sorry. It depends on the class, right? Well, if you have a, a, uh, an educated professor who wants to use proper logic, which there are laws to, proper grammar, which there are laws to, and isn't a, an arbitrary uh, uh, course of philosophy where you are given by the professor the freedom to invent whatever you want based on the letters of the alphabet, no matter how they're set together. In other words, if it says dog, and you tell the professor, well, professor, I read tomato. Oh, that's okay, that's the way you view it. That's called, um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's called stupid. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's where you become subjective. Right. Nothing has any real- well, the world meaning. is subjective. Well, here, right? let, well, that's it's not our my nature. position, but here's it's the thing. It's our nature. Sir, 
Can we try that at the bank? You go to the bank and you say, no, I'm going to... The I'm, bank is not subjective. Hold on a second. Okay, there you go. Why not? Why well, doesn't it work there? Why doesn't like, it work in the lady, court of law? Lady, I have 25000 in my account. And she says, no, I'm sorry, you don't. Right. And the, and the reality is you don't, right? Right. So here's the thing. No matter how you want to interpret what the numbers in your account say, the reality is if it says 20 bucks, it's 20 bucks. Right. So that's the same thing we apply to any work of literature, be it religious, philosophical, historical, or otherwise. The I thing, don't necessarily agree with okay, that. Okay, fine. We, but let's not argue about disagreeing. You disagree with that. As a Christian, I hold to the position that literature has rules, that the world is not subjective, that there are realities, there are universals, and there are absolutes. Nouns are nouns, verbs are verbs, adjectives are adjectives. So when I read the Bible, I don't read it subjectively. Jesus said, repent or you will perish. That means he doesn't care about sin. No, it means turn from your sins or you're going to hell in the light of the con context. If somebody interprets it differently, we need to see if they're following the rules of grammar. If there are no yeah, rules but for grammar. There's something uh, known as semantics, and also, you know, our grammar, you know, is different than other people. It's, it's Greek. geographical. I can read and Greek. And it's also, uh, yeah, I'm sure you can. Who's to say that one belief is wrong? Why, why do we have differing beliefs? That seems like something that's happened naturally, organically. Okay, that's very easily answered. The reason okay. we have different beliefs is because we are different people with different thoughts, different convictions, different experiences. So if we don't agree on s s the same things, right. obviously disagreement. Now, what the Christians do is they don't sit there and say, well, I believe this and he agrees with me no when christians agree theologically on something they're both agreeing on what the bible says they're not agreeing with each other oh well i agree with greg no greg and i both agree with the biblical record and so the christians are unified on what the bible says we're not unified with one another i'm of paul i'm of apollos no i am of Christ and I believe what Christ has revealed so, and if he agrees with what Christ has revealed as well then we agree together so are you saying not both the Old and the New Testament because some Christians only believe in the New Testament right certain uh, portions no, of Christianity no, no one can call themselves a Christian and deny any part of the Bible unless they are I, I give room in this ignorance a young Christian that hasn't been taught but once they've matured, the Bible, there's a verse in the Bible that says that those who are babes in Christ, new in the faith, should grow to the point of maturity where they themselves are now teaching others. So I don't accept somebody saying, well, I've been a Christian 20 years and I don't believe that Paul wrote this book. It's like, you haven't been doing your homework as a Christian? You haven't been studying? Shame on you. I don't know that you're a Christian. You're not obeying the verses of the Bible that teach that we need to study, to learn, and to grow. One of the guys uh, was saying that language is subjective, and I was just stating here that if it weren't, um, you know, salad, then you wouldn't, you could never even develop language. If it was not objective, you could never even start a language. Think about it. Right. It would. Yeah. It. We wouldn't be communicating right now. Right. I mean, there's even the two uh, grunts. Ooga, what's ugu mean? What's booga mean? <laughs> what does now, subjective it, mean? It's subject. Yeah, exactly. What would subjective mean? Well, here's the thing. Symbols do get interpreted. If, for instance, uh, Egyptian. I was showing Sam my book on uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs, right? And on the Rosetta Stone that has three different languages on it. It mm -hmm. has uh, demotic, Egyptian, and Greek. And those are the, the Egyptian is symbols. When you go to the bathroom at a store, you're gonna see a triangle and a circle. Which one do you go into? The one with two little sticks <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> they both have two little sticks, only one's wearing a skirt. No triangles. Now, okay, well, here's the thing. Those symbols tell you male, female, right? That's subjective though. No, you tell that when the cops come and arrest you for going <laughs> into the wrong door. Yeah. So those symbols have become universal, and they tell you that this is male, this is female. When you see a 
red circle with the line through it, it means no, universally. Right. Now, it doesn't have an alphabet, it's a symbol. Alphabets are symbols. Right. An F is a line with two little lines like that. That's a, How, what, I aced that test, baby. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, so the thing is this. Everybody's tough. Um, yeah, man, I'll walk right in front of you. I won't even care. Uh, so here's the thing. When we take certain symbols and they become universal, it, or the common consensus, we we agree that there are how many 26 letters in the alphabet, and those letters, arranged in a certain way, can communicate certain things. Right. It's language. And so, where the, am I going? With well, this? The, the example that you gave with the uh, the police officer getting the guy for going into the wrong restroom. Yeah. That the fact that he doesn't do that just it's another example of how people cannot believe or live what they believe. In We're even like mice. Bi unbiblical world When views. you get to a, a light and it turns red, the color tells you to stop. Right. You are affected, you're interpreting a light in a certain way that means stop. And then get off, get your foot off the gas pedal, put it on the brake, and don't cross those lines. That red light tells you a whole bunch of things. It also tells you there are consequences. So people don't realize that we are interpreting things in a logical, coherent way that is co universally accepted, and I don't mean worldly, I mean at least within the certain culture that has that. And we are not making blunders there. We don't go into the doctor's uh, operating table and, and letting him hold that worldview. Well, right. doc, it's my appendix. And then uh, you come out of the operating room with your tonsils gone. Oh. Hey, appendix to you, tonsils to me. Why quibble over words? Heck no. No such thing as a mistake. So you don't do that. You expect him to follow so, and to communicate with the other doctors and the nurses. People are so darn stupid today. And since that guy is still alive, I know he doesn't live that worldview. Exactly. Out, <laughs> Thank which you. shows he needs to get a new worldview if it doesn't work out in reality. See, right? they, they jump ship when it comes to religion. And more specifically, when it comes to being antagonist towards the Judeo-Christian faith, people do not live out their worldviews. You're absolutely right. He doesn't go to the medicine cabinet, Tylenol, cyanide, eh, this will work for a headache. <laughs> no, you don't do that. You know that that's poison, it's going to kill you. So nobody lives out their uh, subjective worldview. It's, it's impossible. And like, that's a good point. The fact that he's standing here alive shows us that they're not living out their worldview. That's an excellent point. They can they they are the most perfect example of the fact that they their worldview fails. And you bringing up uh, Tylenol and arsenic makes me think of uh, the next point where the guy was talking about you know the religious hey, wants, uh, stew. Yeah, the thing is this: on what basis does he object? They're, the moment they open their their mouths, they refute themselves. The moment they say no one can know anything. They've lost the argument. Right. How do they know that? How am I supposed to interpret the sounds that are coming out of their mouths mm -hmm. and agree with them or disagree? Right. That is coherent. But then again, what is coherence? You see, we we don't even get off, get start off. Right. They're <coughs> morons. The Bible says the world is filled with morons. The Greek word is moras, from where we get moron. God declares all of the world stupid. They have all become stupid, the Bible says. The entire world. Every one of us are a bunch of dumb morons. Unless God gives us, by His grace, a little bit of common sense. Hopefully more than a billy goat. If He doesn't do that for us, we end up in the absurdities of the world. So one of the repeated uh, things that seemed to come up a theme with the guy's conversation was that there's these similarities, and somehow that, that similarity implies that not one of them is right. Oh, they all teach to be nice to one another, even if that's true, even if we granted that. How could uh, similarity prove anything? The cops and the robbers both Because, you know, like you said, uh, yeah. well, arsenic and uh, Tylenol both come in pill form, so therefore that similarity means they're all the same. Yeah. Right? So just... Absolutely. Here, what I would suggest to the world is to take a course in logic. Basic logic will help you out. Let me see this. Um, this is a very simple, I'm not going to go through this, but 
If you can learn this diagram right here and interpret that, you will learn how to present an argument that is logical, that is coherent, that makes sense, that is either valid or invalid, but you'll know if it's valid or invalid. It's very simple.